One of the most frustrating problems in a good IVF lab is when you get poor quality embryos. Now let me explain. When we do IVF, it's not just the patient who expects we'll make good quality embryos. It's the clinic also which expects that the embryos which are created will be good quality. And the good news is, of course, for most patients, embryos are good quality and this is why we document them. And this is why we provide photographs of the embryos so patients can see that we've created top quality blastocysts for them before we either transfer into the uterus or before we freeze. And this documentation is extremely helpful because it increases the patient's confidence levels that they've received high quality medical care. But the fact of the matter is that not all patients will end up with top quality embryos. And this can be major heartbreak. Now for older patients, for example, with poor ovarian reserve, patients where you know that they're more than 42, you don't even expect to get good quality eggs and you don't even expect to get good quality embryos. So you do your best, but these patients also have realistic expectations and they understand that no matter what we do, you may still end up with poor quality embryos. It's much, much harder to deal with that group of patients who is young, who has a good ovarian reserve, who has a good ovarian response, who get lots of eggs and yet end up with poor quality embryos. Now, these patients again will fall into two categories. One are patients with polycystic ovarian disease, where they grow lots of follicles and lots of eggs, but often the quality of the eggs is not very good. And it's very hard to really assess this until you actually do the IVF cycle. And that's why an IVF cycle is not just treatment, it's diagnostic. And you can use that information to tweak the superovulation protocol for these PCO patients in the next cycle. So at least that's some hope for the future. But some patients where everything seems to be fine still end up with poor quality embryos. And the reality, at least in India, is that the commonest reason for poor quality embryos is not a problem with the eggs or a problem with the sperm, it's a problem with the lab. And to add insult to injury, a lot of labs do not provide any embryo photographs or any documentation. And when patients end up with poor quality embryos, they hide the truth. They do not provide photographs of embryos. And what's even worse, they blame the patient for the poor quality of embryos saying, oh, there's something wrong with you and your best chance is to use donor eggs. And I think this problem is going to get progressively worse until patients learn to ask good quality questions and demand embryo photos for themselves.